She collaborates in the operations part of the UNAM network. She will be speaking about experiences in IPv6 activations, what are the steps that we have to follow. She will be speaking for about 15 minutes, and we'll have a few minutes for Q&A at the end. So let us welcome our speaker with an applause. Gracias, buenas tardes. Bueno, eh, mi ponencia es Thank you, good afternoon. I'll be speaking about experiences in IPv6 activations and what steps do we have to follow. Today we'll be covering the following uh, points, the objectives and the steps to be followed for IPv6 implementation in our organization. Now, how did the need arise to have the steps that have to be followed? The Autonomous University of Mexico has been promoting IPv6 implementation in local networks where we have our end users and we find that there is a lot of information lacking on IPv6. Now, we also have the government initiative because the government entities also have IPv6 in their networks. So we have been providing training to those government agencies. So we see that there is a need that all the knowledge on IPv6 should be informed beyond the circle of the ISPs and the academia. So the purpose was to propose a general plan of action to implement IPv6 in an organization. Now, the IT expert has to implement IPv6 and they have no idea of what an IPv6 address is. So though it might seem quite obvious, the first step to implement IPv6 is to have the knowledge and the basic knowledge of what IPv6 is and what are the mechanisms available to implement this in our network. Entonces, so, what do we need? And even uh, you as the experts, uh, we should be able to establish and we should be able to document and uh, to uh, give uh, solutions to all the, the those people that don't have a basic knowledge, but a knowledge that is more uh, uh, um, more sensible so that uh, they can uh, do their implementations uh, faster. Um, so phase two, uh, step two is planning. And we have an opportunity to do it step by step and doing things right. It's not just uh, going to a router and uh, setting up configurations just uh, because. We need some planning, and not only do we need planning of uh, the assets that uh, we have at present, but also we should be able to uh, see all uh, the growth that we may have in the future for this uh, planning to be successful. Among the most important issues that we've seen for uh, planning, first of all, we need to uh, have uh, an inventory of hardware and software of all the IT infrastructure that we have in our organization. All the devices with an IP address need to be considered, no matter how ba basic they sound. And among uh, the most important in the list, we have uh, the uh, networks and uh, the telecom uh, uh, security equipment, uh, fine, uh, the uh, um, uh, final devices and uh, the uh, service providers too. We need to contemplate all the service providers because if they support uh, IPv6 in uh, the case of Mexico, there are foreign entities that are far from having the correct infrastructure for the implementation of IPv6. Another important uh, point is establishing working groups. Apparently, the implementation of IPv6 in an organization, basically, uh, it's telecom that uh, owns uh, the process. 
However, if we don't have a, a multidisciplinary team, including several areas, we're going to leave the apps out. Remember that IPv6 is just the telecom part, but um, it's also it also includes security. Security is also very important. It should be contemplated from the beginning. We ha also have the development part, the service. All these areas need to be contemplated so that uh, their implementation may be uh, uh, complete and uh, so that the security system may be comprehensive. Now, the implementation of IPv6 may be done by stages depending on the facilities and the size of these organizations. Why? Because we need to establish the scopes uh, that uh, may we need to have attainable goals, both in the short term and in the long term. And, uh, uh, monitor them so that we can finish them because we also wanted to find our users not uh, so not only do they they start configuring things and you don't and and the users don't even know what's been done uh, the developers have no idea what uh, ipv6 is going to be useful for so all these uh, goals will uh, be useful but they need to be based uh, based on uh, the resources available and the budget that is uh, generated for this uh, uh, and so the most important things that we saw in planning, what, what should an implementation plan include? First of all, the numbering plan. The routing protocols that we're going to handle, the devices. Why the devices? Because we need to make decisions on how the IPv6 uh, addresses are going to be assigned with the end users or uh, with the devices. Services and apps, how are our apps going to be a uh, implemented with the databases. There are many homemade uh, apps that were done with the addresses, not with the domain. And now we should see the way we can do this feature with IPv6 service providers, as I was telling you, and there's no doubt that we need to have the security part. Security cannot be ignored, nor can we wait to include it until all IPv6 has been included. But uh, head on, we need to think of the security measures that uh, go hand in hand with the I implementation of IPv6. What would be step three? Analysis and validation of uh, the information already available. So we have a listing of all the devices in our organization, but what does uh, the listing in play? imply now it's not just having 30,000 machines but also to see the uh, operation system if they already have IPv6 if you need to uh, put a, a patch uh, what are the IPv4 policies they implement uh, do they already accept IPv6 apparently by now most devices already support IPv6 however there are cases with very old equipment that do not support IPv6 so we have to contemplate all these devices and you need to decide whether they can uh, they enable updates, uh, they remain as they are, or oh, for instance, especially in the apps, maybe the time where you see the, that the implementation is going to be rather lengthy, but in the end, it, you need to contemplate it and uh, monitor it appropriately. Now, I've already seen how the devices are working now we have to determine what are the mechanism or mechanisms available or that we can use uh, in our organizations step three step four will be start establishing policies for um, assignment and this has to do with the numbering plan so what are the prefixes that have been assigned depending based on the number of uh, devices that you have or what is your plan and now we have to see how we are going to assign not just to the local networks but also how we are going to assign for the links or the administration of the devices so there are many areas that uh, you need to include in the development part and it is also very important for them to determine how 
what are the general comments and the minimum considerations because we see that in most cases they don't have a, any idea of what a pre prefix uh, 48 or a slash 32 are so we need uh, to um, make them aware of that so step five and now this is the more interesting part for the improvement of telecom now we need so we need to configure our devices now depending on the size of organizations we are going to see if we're going to divide it into phases but uh, the most important thing is to have a pilot area we can't start uh, uh, configuring in the backbone, backbone if we don't know how it's going to work or whether there's going to be a local network. So in this pilot network, first we're going to configure things. Then we're going to test uh, uh, how it's working and all the problems entailed uh, of IPv6 and maybe we don't even know how to solve the problems. For this, it's also very important to document all this to create a base of knowledge. The configuration of routing protocols here, we need to see what considerations we're going to take for the routing protocols, both internal and external, and to do all the tests to see how the troubleshooting will be done, not just in this case for IPv6, but also IPv4 to see how, what the operations will be later on. And then implementation of security. As I was telling you, security must be considered from the beginning. So security will involve all the devices. In this case, routing protocols, access to the network, services, and clients. Another important item. We are going to, uh, prov uh, to provide uh, network uh, services. We are going to have DNS that are already IPv6. We are going to enable the DHCP for uh, our end users. We are also going to have triple A. Uh, all those parts and, and NTP. So all those parts that, uh, uh, that we need to see if we are going to handle them. So, so now we've already enabled IPv6 in the network. Is that the is then is the project over then? Well, the answer would be no. There, actually, it is where the operation of part starts. So, other very important points are that when you complete the enablement of IPv6, things should not do not finish there because we have detected that very often those that activate and implement the part of IPv6 leave the institution. There are new people coming, and they just don't know how to implement IPv6, and people forget things, and they even start deleting configurations because they don't make sense to them. So if you wish to know the development and the implementations of IPv6, you need to preserve all the documentation and uh, all uh, the knowledge, the expertise, so that the people who are going to w start working with IPv6 may continue with this implementation. So, at least for the operational part, we need to con include uh, the numbering part. How are we going to assign new links? If there's a new CDA entering uh, the facilities, how are they going to be assigned? We need to see the routing policy, the security routing, and uh, of course, uh, procedures uh, for troubleshooting. So, what we want to say is that they need to be a virtuous circle. There are always going to be improvements in the network. I know that everybody here knows that the network is never static, so there are always going to be improvements, and we're always going to be able to plan things. We're going to uh, verify things and act so that we can improve all the networks. But now, given the circumstances, in the end, we always have improvements to determine because 
Now we have all the part of IPv6 activated. The operational part is we and we have a traffic going through our links and we have all the traffic, IPv6 traffic in our network, but we must never forget monitoring. We need to see what is uh, the consumption of IPv6. We need to see the visibility of IPv6 so that together we may keep record and see the security part. If we are having an attack, maybe it's not not just in IPv4, but it also in IPv6. And I think that with this, I finish my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And I don't know whether anybody has any questions. Muchas gracias, Rocio. Thank you very much, Rocio. Any questions? All right. So thank you. I'm going to call up the next speaker. He knows he has to come. So welcome Fernando Vont, who's a great friend and 